Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order, and sometimes very creatively. This is part two of Strategic Quitting with Brandon McCormick and Mike DeRosa. You heard those names right. They are fathers, not moms, but they're talking about running on the treadmill for 24 hours, and I brought them on anyway. Pause right now. Go back in your queue if you have not heard part one of Strategic Quitting. That will introduce you to Brandon and Mike as men and fathers. It will let you know why they decided to run on the treadmill for 24 hours, what their game plan looked like during, and touch on the moment when they knew they had to bow out. We're picking it up from here and talking about that aftermath and talking about what they do with this moving forward. Here we are, Strategic Quitting with Brandon and Mike. So what I hear you saying is the quit was a strategic move within a bigger picture of achieving this goal, which story is still being written. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So you, you say, okay, we're going to do a hundred miles. We are hype. We're excited. It's feeling like you're going to do it. (laughs) Um, so when you called it, did like when you said, Hey, not, you know, our strategic move, um, we need to stop here. If this is ever going to be a thing. Um, did you feel like your ego took a hit? Like, what did it feel like to have to tell others? Yeah, we didn't make it. (laughs) Um, for me, um, honestly, uh, like I said, I, I'm not afraid to fail. Um, I put that number out there, um, cause everybody was like, is there a goal that's, you know, we got that question we're leading up to it when you at, when, you know, we asking these folks and telling them about it, what we're doing, um, they get, you know, is there a goal? Yes. It's a hundred mile goal. Um, you know, um, just, yeah. I mean, in a way, yeah, you're like, ah, you know, you know, I didn't get it, but at the same time, it's like that's the most I accomplished something I've never accomplished before myself. Um, I've never ran no more than a a full marathon. I want you know, so that's wild. You too, Mike. Twenty six. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, we we went into this just being marathon runners <laughs> and uh, just loving yeah. to be you know in the outdoors, being fit and running. So, granted, we didn't reach our hundred mile goal that Brandon set for us, and. Um, but we still achieved a new goal within ourselves running 65 miles in one day. is still kind of insane when you think about it, even though we're disappointed at the same time, we're happy for each other as well. It's right. over a hundred kilometers. And lest anybody think I'm beating up on you guys about this, you know, before we agreed to sit down together and talk about this, I just want to make very clear. I think it's a winning move to quit strategically, right? Like you guys could have just slogged it out and ran yourself into the ground and finished this. But like, at what cost? Are you debilitated? Are you pain cave number 11 today and you can't pick up your children? You guys are both fathers, very active, involved fathers. Um, I I think it it takes a very mature winner, if I'm being punny, um, to to make a strategic quit. So I I just want to like, put that out there that like I'm fist pumping the air and saying yes smart mature decision we have to think about sometimes am I really facing adversity or is it better if I just call it right now and put my energy and efforts elsewhere right right so speaking of elsewhere um I love Mike how you positioned it like hey like the like calling it or quitting on Sunday that is just part of the bigger picture. And that's maybe when we go back and we try this again with that experience under our belt. So am I assuming too much to think you guys are going to make another run at this? Oh, unintended? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. It will happen. It will happen. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. I, I love talking with you guys. You know, I think a big thing, um, a big thing here. Brandon, you talked about watching the other gal on Facebook Live do her attempt, 
and really learning from that. You talk about um, bouncing ideas and training off of one another and your communication during the event itself. Um, look, it wasn't planned this way, but I think, and maybe there's somebody out there right now that I just did an episode on big, hairy, audacious goals. And one of the things I brought up was, yeah, you got to have a, a smart goal. Like Brandon, you touched on it. Like, ah, people want to know what your specific measurable goal is. But like, if it's a BHAG, if it's a big, hairy, audacious goal, attainable and realistic, you kind of have to throw that out the window. So you guys just made a great run at a BHAG that still exists for you. Right. Yes, yes. Yes. Awesome. Not ashamed at all. Proud. But still focused on the on the on the end goal. Absolutely. I think um I think the 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 goal that Brandon set for us and me and him talked about it, um uh, I think it was definitely achievable on our ends and in our heads it was achievable. Um just like, you know, just like Brandon stated though, there was just just some things that we kind of we were kind of just testing the waters and just kind of winging a few ideas that we both threw at each other and and just went with it. So now we can kind of go back to the drawing board adjust what we think will work, get some advice from people like you, Susie, and, and just kind of um, do our own research and say, all right, let's, let's do another run at it. And we, we hope to reach our hundred mile goal. And then in the future, go for the Guinness, Guinness record, go together. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering how many people out there want to do something big like this, but they're afraid to just Go, like they're so caught up in planning it in their heads that they don't just go for it. Do you have you guys always been like this? You just go for stuff that you want to achieve. I, Brandon, I think we have. I mean, yeah, I pretty <laughs> much have. Uh, um, it's been a lot of going for things with uh, just between the two of us. Um, you know, um, we've been going for a lot lately. Um, <laughs> uh, we will be running a uh, Berlin Marathon together. Uh, in 2019 in September this September, year. September, baby, this September. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, it's just amazing. If you notice, Mike keeps saying that uh, I set this goal. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know if you guys are listening to hear that, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, that's, I, uh, you know, I thank him for, you know what I'm saying, to, for uh, uh, going through that, uh, putting his body through that, too, as well. Um you know, just to just to be there with me and experience that too. Um, so I, you know, I want to, I want to. I, I noticed he kept saying that, so I want to point that out to y'all. Let y'all know, you know, I, I thank Mike for that too, though. Um, you know, because he could have stopped at any time as well. Um, but um, yeah, it, it was it was it was love to have him beside me the whole time. You know, I think I think it's important, uh, and Brandon knows this, but it's important, Susie, for the listeners that. You always got to have something to motivate you to, you know, give you determination. I think that's anything that you do, but especially when you're you're doing something in the fitness community um, and you're constantly doing challenges like me and Brandon. Um, other than like your kids and your family, you got to have somebody next to you. 100 percent. Brandon motivates me. I know that, you know, at, at moments, I think the hardest the hardest part of doing anything is your brain. Right. Because that's what's triggering you to stop doing things sometimes. And uh, when you have someone next to you that you know is going to keep pushing you or is just going to keep pushing regardless, uh, especially because I know Brandon's background, um, I wouldn't want anybody else next to me. Aw. Oh, you guys, it's a love fest in here. You guys are a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I want to congratulate you on, first of all, running – more than twice the distance you you had previous on running 65 miles, bringing about a great awareness to our community for Team for Kids and just being active and staying fit. I live in your community, and so I can say to everyone, these guys are incredible role models in just the health and wellness kind of industry in our community and just in our community in general. Guys, I cannot believe you already have two endurance events on your 2019 <laughs> calendar when you're at a number six on the pain scale. I love it. I love it. And I bet you thought you never thought you would be on a mom podcast. <laughs> That's correct. Right, right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. Yes. You got it. Well, hey, thank you so much. This has been the Run Lift 
mom podcast with two superstar dads. <laughs> hey, Run Lift Mom listeners. You know I'm the mom of four kids under age five, and therefore, I am always looking for ways to work smart, not hard. Anchor is the smartest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. First of all, there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, but Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so then it can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole lot more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is quite literally everything you need all in one place, and y'all, it's free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, Brandon McCormick and Mike DeRosa for coming on the Run Lift Mom podcast. I hope everyone could hear the smile across the audio like I could. These guys are incredibly inspiring. The word can't is not in their vocabulary. They are already planning other endurance events for 2019. They're already planning on leveling up the 24 hours on a treadmill. And let's not forget that before this effort, the farthest either of these guys had ever run was 26.2 miles. It's incredibly inspiring. What a blessing to have them on. Again, it's the Run Lift Mom podcast, but these fathers represented well. The work they did and the awareness that they're doing for Team for Kids through this should also not go unrecognized. And if you are interested in learning more about strategic quitting, so realizing the difference between adversity and maybe, you know, gracefully bowing out so you can put your energy elsewhere where it might be better spent, I highly recommend that you read the book, The Dip by Seth Godin. It will take you no more than two hours, even if you're slow, and it really digs into this topic and helps you think about that personal decision should you have to make it in the future. You could also learn a lot by reflecting on a time that you might have felt like that. Until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run Lift Mom podcast. Did you enjoy this? Y'all, I am just getting started. You can do me a solid by subscribing, leaving a review, or find me on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag RunLiftMom and let me know how I can make this better.